Okay, unit five test review. Graph the equation, identify the range. So obviously you're gonna need graph paper. So number one, we've got, it says number 12, but it's number one. Y equals negative five X squared plus 10 X plus two. So what formation is this? This is an ABC formation, standard form is what it's called, okay? Okay, so you stack three coordinates, and the most important one is this, because that's your vertex. Okay, so to find the vertex X, that's opposite of B divided by 2 times A, that's the maximum or the minimum. Okay, so the opposite of B is negative 10, because it's plus 10, and then 2 times negative 5, so 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, so then I divide those, and that equals 1. So I go one higher, one lower, okay? Then you simply, actually the zero is easy to find. You can find that mentally, because then the if x is zero here, that's gone. If x is zero there, that's gone. So you'd end up with two right there. Hopefully you get two here as well, okay? You should at least check just to make sure everything's right. The first and the third should match. If they don't, something's up. Two, yep. I substitute 1 in for the x's, and I get 7, okay? So that should be easy enough to graph. Everything can go by 1, so 2, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You're going to want to label that x, y for the range later on, and then 0, 1, 2. Okay, so it's a narrow parabola, okay? Now the range, I put range and I put y, okay? Now, that's, the, that's based off the vertex 7, okay? And from there you're just going down, so less than or equal to 7. Okay, number 2. y is equal to 4 quantity x plus 3 squared, okay? Minus 3, so now... We have an A, an H, and a K. So when I'm dealing with A, H, and K, first thing I want to do is write the parent function for quadratics. Y equals X squared. And then I make a table for that. And I sub, I'll substitute 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So if I square these numbers, I get 9, 4, 1, 0. And if you square negatives, they come out as positives. 1, 4, 9. Okay, now what do we do with the A? Well, I multiply the Y coordinates by 4, okay? Now what do I do with the H? Well, I set the expression that H is related to equal to 0. I subtract 3 from each side, and I get negative 3. So I need to add a negative 3 to all the X's, and then the K means I need to subtract 3 after I multiply by 4, okay? You want to go in order. So if I add negative 3, that now goes to 0, that goes to negative 1, that goes to negative 2, and that go, the vertex in the middle goes to negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. Okay? Then I multiply 9 by 4 and subtract 3, it's 33. 4 by 4 is 16, minus 3 is 13. 1 times 4 is 4, minus 3 is 1. 0 times 4 is 0, minus 3 is negative 3. 1 times 4 is 4, minus 3 is 1. Whoops, wait a second. Yeah, okay, I guess it stays 1. That's kind of odd, but that's okay. 16 minus 3 is 13, and then 33. Okay, Okay. so we're going to have to obviously number the y-axis by 5. So we stay in the middle, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 33. Then left 1, 5, 10, and then... 13 would be there. Negative 2, 1 is just above it. Okay. Negative 3, negative 3, so that would be here. Then we go back up around. Okay, and there's my parabola. Now you're going to mark the middle point. That was negative 3, negative 3. It's right there from the table. Okay. Okay, so y is based off the range, okay, y, 
and then you're going to put less than or equal, or no, excuse me, you're going to put negative 3, and then it goes up, so it's greater than or equal. Okay. All right, now let's solve some equations here today. Okay. Solve the equation. Factoring must be used. Okay. It must be used when possible. You only go to the quadratic formula if the expression's prime. I don't want people just using the quadratic formula every single time. Okay, so number three, we have x to the second plus 11x plus 30 equals zero. So there will be two solutions to this. So I have an implied one in front of the x squared as my a coefficient, my b, and my c. Okay, so a, b, c is you make sure you're equal to zero, you're set. And then I apply the discriminant to see if factoring is viable for a, c. So B is 11, then 4A is 1, C is 30, okay? So I punch that into the calculator. And I got a whole number 1, so I need to use factor, okay? Okay, so with ABC, I need to first identify a GCF if I have one. Then I come down here and I make my table. Okay, so one time, so one eleven thirty. That's going to be one. You can't use x when thirty doesn't have an x, and then we don't have a negative, so the GCF's gone. So a times c, one times thirty is thirty positive. So it's a negative times a negative, and I add to get two positive eleven. One and thirty, nope. 2 and 15, nope. 3 and 10, nope. 4 is not a factor. 5 and 6, yep. That, okay, that's negative 11. To make it positive 11, you go plus, plus. Okay, now your A is just a 1, okay? So it's easy to factor. So you got XX plus 5 plus 6. Now you line up your factors here. You didn't do anything on the GCF, so you just have X plus 5 times x plus 6 equals 0. So you've rewritten that in factored form and you got f1, f2. So x plus 5 could equal 0 or x plus 6 could equal 0. So you get negative 5 for your first answer and negative 6 for your second. Okay. Alright, next one. Number 4, we have 9x to the power of 2 minus 18x equals 0. This is just an A and a B, so you make sure you're set at zero, which you are, okay? So then you set up your GCF. And that's it, okay? 9 and 18, use your multiplication table, you'd get 9, x squared and x, you put an x. So then I put that in parentheses, and then I go divide by 9x up there. Cancel the x's on the second division. Now that's 1x, okay? The x squared goes to x when I divide minus 2. And the factoring is completed, so you got 9x times 1x minus 2. Okay, so f1, f2. So I've rewritten it in factored form with two linear factors. It means I can just solve, I get 0. Linear factor means it just has an x. There's not a power to the x. It's just x to the first. 1x equals 2, so that means x is 2. You can divide by 1 if you want, but it's just going to end up at this 2. I'm going to rip this paper off because I hate writing against this spiral. Once you get past the graphs, it starts going kind of quick if you know your rules. If you don't know your rules, it doesn't. Okay. 8x squared plus 10x minus 3 equals 0. Okay, so we have two solutions for x. And we have an a and a b and a c again. So we're set at 0. Now we go apply the discriminant to see if I would try to factor this. So b is 10. A is 5, 8, C is negative 3. Now you can use your calculator, but it's 100 minus, because 10 to the second is 100. 4 times 8 is 32, times negative 3 is negative 96, but minus negative 96 is plus, 100 plus 96. It's 
So 196 is a perfect square. It's 14. Okay, so I better I should get 14 if my mental math is correct here. And I do. Okay. So equals 14, that means we need to factor. So again, if you get a whole number, I will dock you uh, you will get marked all, the whole thing wrong if you just go to quadratic formula. You need to make you need to know how to factor. So 8, 10, and 3, GCF's 1, okay, so we're not doing it. It's going to be negative 24, so it's a positive times a negative, and I'm adding the factors to try to create positive 10. 1 and 24, no go. If I divide that by 2, I get 12. Okay, that's negative 10, so I found the numbers. I just got to adjust the sign, so pop, just switch them both opposite. Negative 10 plus, negative 2 plus 12. Okay, but your A isn't isn't a 1, it's an 8. So how you deal with the 8 is you make two, two sets of parentheses. You lead off with 8, and then XX minus 2 plus 12. Okay, these are both in row 2, so we'd want to divide down by 2, and that's 4x minus 1. The 2 you're dividing by just goes away, okay? That doesn't roll to the outside or anything. 8 and 12 is in the 4th row, so 2x plus 3. Okay, so write your factors GCF. I didn't do anything. So I have 4x minus 1 times 2x plus 3 equals 0, so f1, f2. So 4x minus 1 could equal 0, 2x plus 3 could equal 0. So we add 1. 4x equals 1, divide by 4. Keep that. You can write the decimal or just write 1 fourth. Minus 3, you get negative 3. Divide by 2, you can write the decimal or just write negative 3 over 2. 1 fourth and negative 3 over 2. Okay, number 6. 5x squared minus 2 equals 398. So there's two answers. Okay, you got an A and two C's. So we don't worry about, we don't factor. Okay, we just get the x squared by itself. So it takes you to 400. And divide by your 5. And that is going to be 80. Then we apply the square root. Now remember, a square root equals a positive or a negative. Now, 81 is not a perfect square. If that was 81, I'd just write 9 down because that's on the board. But 80, i got to start dividing. So I'd start at 64 from the perfect square list. 49, 36, nope. 25, nope. 16, chain. So I... Write it in two square roots, 16 and 4. So the square root of 16, or no, 16 and 5, 5, I got 5, sorry. That's a 5 right there. Square root of 16 is 4. So it's 4 with a square root of 5. So 4 square root 5, and then 4 square root of 5 negative. Okay. All right. Next up, this is number 7. 4x squared plus 3 equals x squared minus 7x. So there's two answers. So that's an A, that's a C, that's an A, and that's a B. So we obviously have A, B, C, so we need to make one side equal to 0. Okay. So minus 1x squared, that can then go with your 4x squared, then plus 7x. Now, um, there's no b over there, so we put plus 7x here. But then when I write the equation, the a comes first, obviously, 3x squared. Then the b plus 7x, and then the c plus 3. Okay, and now we're ready to apply the discriminant. You can't apply the discriminant until you've rewritten it equal to 0. So b is 7. A is 3, C is 3. So that's 49, and that's going to be um, 36. 49 minus 36 is 13, and the square root of 13 is not a perfect square. So I don't think it's going to be a whole number. 
So I use my calculator to verify. 7 squared minus 4, 3, and 3. Okay, 3.61. Okay, we're obviously going, so that's prime. So prime means use a quadratic formula. Opposite of B plus or minus the square root, B squared minus 4AC, B squared minus 4AC over 2A, over 2A. Okay, so negative 7 is the opposite of B, A is 3, and that square root, we've already figured out that that's 3.61. Negative 7, then they get 6, okay, and then 3.61. Then I approximate my answers. Negative 0 0.57. Divide by 6, negative 1.77. Okay, those are your approximate solutions. Not exact, but approximate. Okay, next one. 3 quantity x minus 4 squared equals 48. Well, this wouldn't be A, B, C. This would be an A, H, and um, K. So to solve for x in an A, H, K, we want to make a table and bring the x minus 4 over here. Because it's a second power, so there will be a square root involved where I get a positive negative. Now, I just cross out that and just rewrite it with h. 3h squared equals 48. Then we divide by 3, and that's 16. Apply the square root to 16. Now, you don't have to divide because 16 is a perfect square. It's 4. So it's 4 or negative 4. So you just add 4. That's 8 for your first solution. Then if I add 4 to negative 4, I get 0. That's okay. 0 is a solution. Okay, and there you go. Okay, now, in the next problem, it says write an equation of the quadratic function given on the graph. Use vertex form. Okay, if you're on virtual, this has been faxed to you. Okay, if you don't know where it's at, ask me. Okay. Write the quadratic equation. You got to fill in for a, h, and k, and you're done. The y and the x will be in the answer. All right, now h, k is easy. It's this point here. So you're over one, two, three. So three, that's your h, and you're up one, two, three. That's your k. So three, three. Now we will not be making it plus 3 here because it's just minus 3, it's not minus negative, okay? So those are filled in, but now I have to find A. Now write that equation out. Now if you're going to solve for A, you got to replace X and Y. So you're going to make an XY coordinate right there and find what this one is or this one, it doesn't matter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that'd be 5 for x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for y. So replace you that with 6, and that's with 5, and now we can solve for a, but you got to have a way you go about it. 6 equals a, and then you're going to put the plus 3. Now you got to find what's in front of the, the a, and you simplify your parentheses. You have 5 minus 3 to the second. So that's 2, and then 2 times itself is 4. So A is multiplied by 4. Okay, because A times 5 minus 3 to the second. Well, I found out that 5 minus 3 to the second is 4, so it's 4 times A, and it's academic from there. So you get 3, 3 equals 4 times A, divide by 4, and A is 3 fourths. Okay, cross that out, put 3 fourths, and just write that so it looks prettier. Y equals 3 fourths, parentheses, X minus 3 squared, plus 3. Boom. Okay, so everybody's favorite time. Story problem time. Okay, an online music store sells 4,000 songs in a day when it charges $1 per song. The store decides to increase the price of the songs by $0.05 cents each. If they do this, 80 fewer songs will be sold for each price increase. How many price increases should the store stop this procedure? What's the maximum revenue they will raise? So my job is to find the maximum 
revenue. So to find a maximum, you draw a giant arch, parabola is what it's called, and you have to find the x, y, and to find the x, you got to know your procedure, opposite of b divided by 2 times a. And to find the y, you simply substitute for x in the equation, but we have to have an equation. Now they're talking revenue. Revenue is two parentheses, you're taking the money times the item sold. So I find the two money amounts, you have $1.05. So $1 is your starter, don't put an X on that. It says per song, but you don't put X, okay? Now you're increasing it by five cents each, 0 0.05 times X, because X actually is a number of price changes. So how many times you change a price? Okay, now the items, 4, 000, if this is plus, this is minus, so you got 4000 to start with when you charge a dollar, but when you raise it by 5 cents, 80 fewer, X on that one, okay? So I got a plus here, a plus here, that's 2 by 2 then. So that is the FOIL method, change your R to a Y, okay? And R is your revenue, and Y is the revenue. So I FOIL, I take 1 times 4000. And I take 1 times negative 80x. Then we take 0.05x times 4,000. And then the 0.05x times negative 80x. So 4,000, negative 80x. That times that's 200x. And then you're going to have x to the second. And this times this is going to be um, negative 4. Okay, then I simplify all my products into 1. So x squared is negative 4, and that happens to be my a. Negative 80 plus 200 is 120, that's your b. And then 4,000 is your c. Opposite of b, negative 120, and then put it right there. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, okay? So that's 15. So you got 15 price changes. Now to find the y, we substitute the 15 into the equation for x. y equals negative 4 times 15 to the second plus 120 times 15 plus 4,000. Okay, I got $4,900. Okay, and that's your answer. $4,900 is your maximum revenue. Okay, next problem. Twenty on uh, this one. It has an A and a B. I'll do part A here. It'll be 11A. A baseball is hit in the air from a height of 4 feet above the ground. It shoots into the air with a velocity of 75 feet per second. Part A, we're calculating the ball's maximum height. So maximum height. So to find a maximum, I'm using the same thing here. It's just a different equation where I work from. So opposite of B divided by 2 times A. And Y is substitute for X. Okay, now it's a different equation. Okay, This is gravity. So blank X squared. You're ready for the X squared X and constant right away equals Y. Now remember what these stand for. This is gravity. It's always negative 16. This is the velocity. That's how fast it's going. 75 feet per second. And this is your starting height, which is uh, 4. Okay, you got your A and your B right there. If you put the Y equals in front, that's fine. That's C, but we don't really need to label it C if we're finding the maximum because C is not really, I mean, you're going to punch it in with C, but 2 times negative 16 is negative 32. Then we will be dividing. I'm going to round that to 2.34, and that's your seconds you just found. That's the time it takes to get to the max point. Now to find the actual height, the feet, you replace your axes with 2.34. And then when you solve for Y, you just plug and chug.
Okay, maximum height's 91.89. Approximately feet. Okay, then our last problem here today. 11B. Okay, now we're to have the same information, but just B, I have to calculate how many seconds it takes a baseball to land on the ground, which is zero feet, and then we're going to assume that no one catches it, so seconds. If somebody catches it, it would land before zero feet, but... I digress. So feet and seconds. Seconds is x, feet is y. I cannot stand writing against that spiral. I hate it. Per feet and seconds. Okay, feet per second is 75 times x. We're not making the table because it's not a linear function. It's a quadratic function. So with quadratic functions, you want to mark where you started at, which is 4 feet. And then you need to mark what you're trying to figure out, which is when it's 0 feet. So you know it's 0 feet, and you're going to put question mark seconds. Okay, so blank x squared plus blank x plus blank equals y. So you got negative 16, and then 75x, and then you have your starting heart heights 4. Now, zero feet, that's y, y equals zero, so you replace y with zero. Okay, and I have, two, I have to solve for the x, which would have two solutions given that the variables to the second power. So you have a, you got b, you got c, and we're already equal to zero. So I go off and apply the discriminant, because hopefully, I mean, I don't think this will factor. I would like to know that before I set up all the boxes. And then, so 75, A is negative 16, and C is 4. Or actually, we'll just calculate it. Okay, 76.69. So obviously, that's a prime expression. So we will be using the quadratic formula to get my answers. Opposite of b plus or minus d square root, b squared minus 4ac, b squared minus 4ac over 2a, over 2a. Okay, opposite of B, can I get a negative 75? And then A, can I get a negative 16? Now the square root we already have, we have 76.69. Okay. This is a story problem, so I just put the approximation of the square root over negative 32. Okay, so I have negative 75 plus 76.89 divided by negative 32. I get negative 0 0.06. Now I want to see that, but then I want it crossed off because a negative answer for seconds is not viable. Now we take negative 75 minus 76.89 um, divided by negative 32, 4.75. Okay, so 4.75. Now the reason you didn't get a second positive answer is because it was never at zero feet on the way up. It started at four, so it could it goes, you know, five, whatever. 